All right, so today we're gonna to be creating an implosion particle effect, which is gonna be really useful for things like power-ups, collecting points, collecting coins, things like that. Uh, it's gonna be a really quick tutorial, but really versatile in its use case, so hopefully it'll apply to whatever project you're working on. So let's start off in Photoshop to create the material we'll be using. I'm going to choose a square template with the width and height at 250 and the resolution at 72 pixels per inch. Name the file whatever you like here, I'll call it octagon. And since this particle is just going to be white, we can use the background layer. So let's unlock it and select the lasso tool by selecting L on the keyboard. Next let's draw out the octagon. And on the last vector, let's hold down Control to complete the shape. And then use Control shift i to select the inverse of the current selection. And let's get rid of that by using the Eraser tool, selecting E on the keyboard. And that's good enough for our octagon. Let's export that image, or just save the file as a Photoshop file here. And let's switch over to Unity. Drag in the sprite into your Unity project. And we'll need to create a material for this sprite so that the particle effect renders it correctly. We can do that by right clicking in the project panel, navigating to create and selecting material. I'll name this material Octagon Material. Unity will create a material using the standard shader here. So um, before we change the shader, let's actually drag in our sprite into the material's albedo. And then let's change the shader to the default sprite shader. So with our material made, we're ready to create our particle system. Let's right click in the hierarchy panel navigate to effect and select particle system. Let's first apply our material to the particle systems renderer and that is all we need to do in the render tab. So let's reset the transform and start shaping the effect. Let's go into the shape tab and change the actual shape from cone to sphere and let's increase the radius to five. Let's also drop the radius down, or the radius thickness, excuse me, to zero, forcing the particles to spawn on the outside, or the outer edge of the sphere. Now, we want our particles to move inwards, so let's go up to the main tab and drop the duration from five seconds to two seconds. And let's go in and change the start lifetime to 0.9. We want really low values here because we don't want the particles to move past the middle. So now let's change the spark, the, the spark speed. Let's change the start speed, excuse me, to negative six. And now you can see, oh, let's keep looping enabled and make sure the effect is playing. But as you can see, the effect is starting to take shape. So next, let's add some variation to the size by setting the start size to random between two constants. Let's drop the size to a range of between 0.1 and 0.75. I think that'll be good. So let's also drop the start speed a little more so the particles don't move so far past the middle. Let's go to negative 5.5. All right, so in the emissions tab, let's go and change the rate over time to random between two constants. Let's set the range to 25 and let's do 50. I think that looks good. All right, so let's go in and enable the color over lifetime tab. Uh, that'll add a lot to this effect. So let's start by making that starting alpha zero. And let's add a marker about halfway, maybe a little closer to the beginning, setting 
excuse me, it's alpha to 255 or, you know, full opacity. And then let's also make the ending color yellow. And as you can see, this, this is really starting to look good, in my opinion, for, for how little effort is going in. So let's also change a few final variables here. Let's actually decrease the starting size a little more and let's increase the rate over time. There we go. Let's switch over to the game tab so we don't get any gizmos and we can actually see how it looks. And I like the way it looks, but let's make the final color in the color over the lifetime tab to white. So let's add one more marker here at the end after we move that marker over and let's make this white. And there we go. I actually think that that's pretty good. There's a lot more you could do. We could randomize the rotation, um, stuff like that. But for this video, I'll keep it short. I'll leave things there. Make sure to check out our other effects tutorials and subscribe to the channel.